Hello my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and if you are new here, hey, welcome. And if you're back, welcome back. Today I wanted to hop on and just briefly share an update with you on one of my major projects for the year, one of my bucket list projects. You may or may not be aware that um, towards the beginning of the year I kicked off a rather large conversion of a cross stitch into a diamond painting on a blank canvas. It was my first time working on and starting one of these projects and I was really, really excited to get to start it with all of you and I have loved so, so, so much about getting to do this journey alongside all of you. Uh, the last update that I posted was maybe a couple of months ago now. It's been over a month. And um, that was an update where I shared that I had completed the first quadrant of my canvas. If you're curious, the, the project that I was working on was Dragon Race Into the Night. Uh, it's a cross-stitch chart from Heaven and Earth Designs, and the artwork itself is from Rose Kahn. I divided the canvas into quadrants, just split it in half horizontally and vertically, and it shook out to each quadrant alone, being around 70 by 95 centimeters, 75 by 95 centimeters. So a good size canvas, <laughs> uh, a good size set of four canvases rather. So I just finished that upper left quadrant with you all and had asked for, you know, your thoughts as far as which one should I work on next? What should I, what should I get into next? And then it's been pretty radio silent on that project since that video a couple months ago at this point. So um, I have had some questions and wanted to hop on and share an update. I did really, I did struggle for a little while on whether or not I wanted to do this video at all, but I am anticipating more questions, <laughs> um, especially with some projects that I'll be starting very soon. And I also wanted to offer a little bit of closure and explanation for the many of you that have been following this project uh, with me and have been encouraging me and sharing questions and concerns and learning alongside of me. So I didn't want to take that lightly and I didn't want to try to just pretend like it didn't happen. So if you haven't gathered what I have been hinting at so far, um, this project is unfortunately going on an indefinite hold um, for a number of different reasons. <laughs> so uh, in short, unfortunately, this project is not, it's not bringing me joy. Um, honestly, in the past couple of months, when I have started to think about pulling out the next canvas to start the next quadrant to work on, I've just been feeling dread and a sense of like, I just, I don't want to. It's not gonna be enjoyable, it's gonna be frustrating. Um, and so I spent some time thinking like, it's just a phase, it'll pass. Um, and then I realized very quickly as I, well, not quickly, but I did realize with a lot of thought and asking for advice and input and perspective um, from fellow crafters, just that it was time to put a pause on this project. <laughs> um, I am not one to abandon projects. I think this might be the only time that I have set a project aside with really not being sure if I am ever going to return to it. Um, but let me tell you a little bit more about why that is. So um, if you have been following along with my progress, which I do have a playlist that you are welcome to take a look at. I'm not taking the videos down. Uh, but if you've been following along, you have heard me share in those various progress videos what some of my struggle areas have been, what some of those... Um, opportunities for learning, we can call it, uh, what those looked like for me and how I dealt with them as they came up. And so if you'd like to see some examples, some close-ups um, of what I was struggling with, I would definitely recommend taking a look at those videos because I don't have the canvas or the diamonds here to show you right this moment. Um, but what it comes down to is there are some things that I learned that I should have done differently. <laughs> there are some things that I learned 
were more important to me than I realized. And I want to emphasize that right off the bat, that these were um, areas that were struggles for me personally. That does not mean that it is going to be problematic for you. Um, It certainly has not been problematic for some people because um, the, the place that I sourced my materials from was a place that a number of people had recommended in the Facebook groups that I'm in for the Heaven and Earth Designs projects. And I'm sure that people wouldn't recommend a shop that they weren't having positive experiences with. So please take this with that grain of salt. I want to just, I really hope that you're going to hear my heart and my intent behind this. It's not to um, make anyone feel bad. It's not to tear anyone down whatsoever. I'm just hoping that I can share a little bit about what I've learned is important to me and what I'm looking for when I'm working on a project like this. So first, and um, this may have made a difference in some ways if I had known this out the gate, I should have broken down these canvases differently. I mentioned that I broke it down just into quadrants, splitting it in half each direction. And while that certainly made this project more manageable than if I had tried to somehow work on a canvas that was literally the size of the entire thing, which would have been like over 200 centimeters left or right, I just can't even fathom it. Um, I should have broken it down differently because it still resulted in canvases that were around 70 something centimeters by 95 ish centimeters. And as I was working on these projects, I was running into um, just some difficulties with working with double sided adhesive in general. I struggle with working with double sided adhesive in the best of circumstances, but working on a canvas this size and double sided adhesive, which meant that I didn't want to be rolling the canvas because I didn't want to cause rivers or bubbles. Um, And also because the diamonds were wanting to pop if the canvas wasn't perfectly flat. Um, That meant that I was trying to work on a canvas while keeping it perfectly flat on my table at all times. And that posed some difficulties with reaching the middle areas of the canvases, um, just the logistics of having a canvas that large. I'm lucky that I have a kitchen table that's large enough to accommodate a canvas that size needing to be laying flat the whole time. I wish that I would have instead broken this down into long and thin strips, maybe four like panel styles. Um, potentially even eight. I could have broken down each side into four. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, something along those lines just to make working on a project like that feel a little bit more doable, especially like I said, the problem being that I couldn't roll the canvases because they were double sided adhesive. Um, So that is completely and 100% on me. I chose how to break this canvas down um, and I was not familiar enough with double sided adhesive to realize the problems that this might pose. And I also didn't anticipate that um, I was gonna have a bit, a little bit of trouble with popping drills as well and would need to keep the canvas completely flat otherwise. Um, something else that I learned which is really directly related to this, is that I should have gotten poured glue. (laughs) I I think that I would have enjoyed this experience had I ordered from a supplier that offered poured glue. Again, this is on me. I knew what the the supplier was selling. I knew that I was purchasing double-sided adhesive canvases. They were packaged perfectly. They seemed like good quality for double-sided adhesive canvases. So this is on me. I just discovered that for my enjoyment of a large, large, large scale, long-term diamond painting project like this, that it is worth it for me to go with poured glue to make it an easier diamond painting experience because then I can roll it more easily. The glue itself is usually a lot more forgiving than double-sided adhesive is. Um, you know, that's just something that I took away from it. (laughs) The third thing I learned is that I'm a lot pickier about square diamonds than I realized. 
Um, I I did find these, the diamonds that I had purchased to be really tricky to work with. I ran into, as you may have seen in my update videos, uh, popping diamonds uh, that was so significant I had to seal as I went because if I so much as shifted the canvas, even laying perfectly flat, it felt like colors were popping. It wasn't isolated to just a couple of particular colors. It seemed like it was most of them. Um, and the tricky part with that was that I couldn't exactly tell from looking at them in the tray that they were going to be problematic. Some of them did have tabs, some of them didn't necessarily. They're acrylic drills and I've discovered that for me to have a more enjoyable experience with diamond painting, I need to um, I don't know, I guess just have a different quality or material of diamonds that are um, a little less tricky to work with. So uh, I think that really the major thing that I would have done differently is to not dive quite so <laughs> recklessly headfirst into a project of this scale. And some learning that I would like to pass on to you as a suggestion if you're considering something like this uh, is to to try out a smaller size project like a really small one just to try out a particular company and see if the materials that they offer fit with what makes for an enjoyable diamond painting experience for you like i said that can look different for everyone um, but i wish that i would have tried out a smaller size kit <laughs> uh, just to see like is this the kind of material that I want to work with for a large-scale diamond painting project that I'm likely to spend at least a year working on and like I've said before I haven't I haven't really done like a big tabling or abandoning of a project before um, I, I really wanted to try to power through as it were but I just I kept looking at the three other panels that I still had to do and I was just like I can't do it I can't power through a project at this scale um I just I can't it's going to be miserable and I'm I know that I will just completely burn myself out on diamond painting in general I'll be grumpy I'll be resentful and I just I didn't want to feel like I was abandoning something I had committed to for you guys, especially because I knew that there were so many of you that have been cheering me on and excited to see this project progress. And I feel a little bit like I'm letting you down and I've had to come to terms with like, no, this is something that I have to do for the sake of my being able to enjoy the craft that I'm working on. <laughs> and so I really hope that you will understand. Now, here are some like really positive learnings that I've had though. So I've learned um, how I do want to break down a canvas at this scope in a way that feels really manageable and is going to be just easier to work on in my workspace and um, the materials that I wanna work with that I'm gonna look forward to working with. Because when it comes down to it, the process of working on a cross stitch conversion to a diamond painting on a blank canvas it takes a lot of mental work as it is because you're reading a cross stitch chart, you're counting, you're placing. Um, to me, that that is enough work that I feel like I should be putting into a project. I want everything else to be something that doesn't cause me stress or isn't work. So for me, that means materials that are um, not stressful to work with. Uh, the other main thing that I learned, and I actually am genuinely excited about this, is that I learned how to seal a diamond painting. That's not something I'd ever done before working on this project. And um, I feel confident in that. I got to test out a couple of different sealers and I actually sealed another one of my diamond paintings um, that didn't even necessarily need sealed, but I was kind of like, I feel confident in sealing a diamond painting and I feel like maybe it could help this kit. So I'm just gonna do that. So I love that I have walked away from this project, um, whether it's temporarily or permanently, I have still walked away from this project for the moment having learned some new things and I feel like now I get to apply those things uh, in the other crafting projects that I work on. 
So I wanted to take kind of the end of this video to share preemptively answers to some questions that I anticipate many of you asking. So first, I anticipate many of you are going to ask, will I return to this project? And my honest answer is that I don't know. Um, I will never say never. I have not kitted down the project. I've decided to let it just take up my my two Elizabeth Ward trays that it's currently taking up. I have plenty more, it's, it's fine. Um, but I, I'm not ready to kit it down. Um, I am saving the materials for now. It's occurred to me that if I do want to pick this project back up at some point that I could just replace the materials uh, with ones that I know I'll enjoy working with, but I'm not making that decision right now. Um, so I'm holding, short answer is I'm holding on to the materials, but I do not currently have it on the plan when I'll be working on this project again. We're just going to wait and see. Another question that I anticipate you guys asking is, did I give feedback to the supplier of these materials? And my answer is yes. I sent an email over a couple of weeks ago. I was very, I tried to be very kind and very neutral and very um, just constructive feedback and in a way that was not, um, I, I don't want to tear down this company. I want this company to have absolutely nothing but success and for good things to come their way. And I, you know, emphasize, I'm like, this is just my experience. Clearly there are plenty of other people that have had positive experiences. I, I tried to be very thoughtful and intentional about the feedback that I shared. I recognize how difficult and stressful it is to run a small business. I respect the heck out of small business owners and I give them all the grace and kindness in the world. I made it clear when I shared feedback that I was not asking for any kind of compensation or reimbursement. I just like I purely my motivation was purely like this is informative um, in case you're hearing this from multiple sources, you know, maybe then it's worth considering changing your drill supplier or your can or switching to port glue or something like that. I haven't, as of the time of this filming, heard anything back. If that changes, I will add something in the description, um, but I am not trashing this company. I'm not wishing anything poor against them whatsoever. Like I said, I just discovered that there are certain things that are really important to me when it comes to my diamond painting materials, especially for a project of this scope, and that I, unfortunately, those that these did not work terribly well for me in that sense. So I did share feedback. I believe that the small shop owner has had some things going on in their personal life and, uh, you know, illness and family things going on. And so I am not upset that I haven't heard anything back. I get it. Life happens. And um, so I want to make that abundantly clear to you guys as well. The last question that I imagine some of you will be asking is, what about my bucket list goal of completing a cross stitch conversion to a diamond painting? What about this goal that I was so excited to get started on at the beginning of this year? Well, I have good news. <laughs> I actually am anticipating a delivery tomorrow, the day after that I'm filming this video of the materials for a new cross stitch conversion to a diamond painting. The chart is also from Heaven and Earth Designs. It's a chart that I have been in love with for some time and have been eyeing for some time. That was another sign that I knew it was time to put this, this project on pause was because when I thought about getting to start this other project and to work with a new set of materials and everything, I got so excited, like a level of energy and enthusiasm that I haven't really felt since the very beginning of this project. And so feeling that was also a nudge in the direction of like, okay, yes, it's okay to pause this and move on to something else. So I will film an unboxing of that particular uh, set of materials. I will reveal then what my project is going to be. I will say that it is about the same size as this one. If you would like to go and take a guess, the hint that I will give it is that it is from the artist Amy Stewart. She has a lot of artwork on Heaven and Earth Designs website that's all been licensed. 
feel free to go and take a look. You're welcome to take a guess if you like. If you get it right in the comments, maybe I'll confirm it for you. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, like I said, this video was actually really difficult for me to make. Um, and I really did go back and forth quite a while on whether I wanted to do this video at all and what I wanted to say. And I'll just, I guess I'll just say again that I really, really hope that you're hearing the, um, the intent, what my motives are and where my heart is at in sharing this video. I hope that it explains why you haven't seen anything from me on this project. And I hope that maybe uh, my learnings are something that you can learn from as well to really carefully consider like what are the different kinds of things that are important to you uh, as far as materials go when you're working on a project, what you know are the priorities, um, and to and to consider something like trying out a much smaller scale project to test out, you know, a particular company's material offerings to see um, what you think before you tackle something this large scale that is a much larger investment as well. So please let me know if you have any questions or thoughts. I uh, would, I'm an open book. I'm happy to answer and uh, be helpful. So Thank you guys for going on this journey with me. I really, really am looking forward to starting my next project and sharing it with all of you guys. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably, I don't know if I'll just continue adding to this same playlist or if I'll create a new one, but we'll see. Anyway, my friends, thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. So I hope you have a really wonderful rest of your day. And I'll chat with you in the next one. Bye.